I am Abhishek and this is Beagle Logic, which turns your Beagle bone into a logic analyzer. Allow me to introduce you to the term logic analyzer if you are not already familiar with it. If you are familiar, you can skip the next few minutes. Otherwise, stay with me. So what is a logic analyzer? So chips usually uh, talk to each other in terms of digital signals. There is 0101, uh, some kind of messaging going on between both these, ch both these chips here. So if I wanted to hear the conversation, what uh, these both these chips are talking, what uh, information is being exchanged between these chips, I would have to tap the digital signals. I would sample those digital signals at uh, equal time intervals and then uh, plot them with respect to time. So I get something like this. You see that this is how the yellow signal varies with time, this is how the red signal varies with time, and this is how the blue signal varies with time. So I can try and get an idea that this is some kind of a serial interface. This is something like a clock which is periodically toggling. This is the actual data which is being uh, sent. If you look at a data sheet, you would see uh, a similar diagram being drawn with each of the signals shown here. So uh, logic analyzers are used in circuit debugging to uh, troubleshoot issues with uh, hardware and usually to narrow down whether a particular issue is in the hardware or is it software. Then another application of these is reverse engineering. So usually you have a new hardware which is a black box which you are interested in to know how it is communicating with the parent hardware or you want to use it for your own specific application. So what you do is that you connect each of these signals to the logic analyzer, every signal you can possibly connect so that because you don't really know or you don't have a data sheet of what this black box actually is doing. So using a logic analyzer, you can trace, you can find patterns in the data exchange that is taking place and you can then use this exchange to identify the protocol, identify particular commands, responses being sent on the data lines and then you can use this information in whatever way you want to. So logic analyzers are very important in the field of reverse engineering. With a uh, back from our short detour on logic analyzers, let's now come to how Beagle Logic stands as compared to some of other logic analyzers available in the market. So this is the open bench logic sniffer by Dangerous Prototypes. This is the new Salier Logic 8 and this is Pika Logic. Here you can see a basic idea of what, uh, how much they cost, uh, the maximum of channels they support, the maximum sample rate they support. But you see that the weakness of OLS is the fact that the sample depth of eight channels is, is quite low. In case of Cell Logic 8, the maximum sample rate is, uh, sample depth is limited by the PC RAM. And in case of Beagle Logic, it is limited by the amount of RAM available on the Beagle Bone Black itself. So I put this to a respectable range of 320 mega samples, considering only eight channels. Then at the interface, uh, OLS uses a UART interface at USB high speed. Cell Logic 8 and Beagle Logic use USB 2 high speed, whereas Beagle Logic can also support the LAN interface because it has net networking capabilities. And because it has networking capabilities, it also supports remote debugging functionality. In a, in a nutshell, I can say that Beagle Logic is the best feature and price balance you will find across logic analyzers in the sub $100 category. And the Beagle Bone can be much more than logic analyzer. So if you are still not convinced why Beagle Logic, let me give you more reasons. Beagle Logic has a best in class sample buffer size at this particular price point, 320 megabytes at 100 mega samples per second, which amounts to 3.3 seconds of high speed eight channel data. Because the BeagleBone is a full featured Linux computer, you can not just capture data, but you can also run analysis on the data without support from any external PC. 
go back and you see that the OLS and Celogic 8 have a FPGA and a microcontroller. But uh, because Beagle Logic is sitting on top of a Beagle Moon Black, it has all the capabilities of a normal computer, a full Linux system. So you also have the Sigrox software stack which supports decoding over 30 different digital protocols. For example, I2C, I2S, SPI, UART, WS2812, LED strips, one wire, NRF24001, DS1077 clock, and the R serial wire trace protocol. Networking capabilities of the Beagle Moon Black enable remote debugging. And Beagle Logic also has a web interface which you can use to quickly capture and visualize data. And all of it is open source hardware and open source software. So you can go and view the sources you can contribute to this project. Now I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of the capabilities of Beagle Logic. So before uh, I proceed to the demonstration, what I did was I flash the Beagle Logic system image, which is a custom version of the Debian distribution that ships with the Beagle Moon Black. It's a 900 megabyte download and it can be flashed onto an SD card. Then you insert that SD card into your Beagle Moon Black and you boot the Beagle Moon Black with it. You install the drivers if you are on Windows or Mac, Linux and no node drivers required, and then you navigate to this URL if you want to use the web interface or if your Beagle Moon is connected to the network, then you can go onto the IP address of BeagleBone at port 4000. The web interface will be waiting for you there. Now, let me open up the feed from my camera. Here is the BeagleBone Black. This is the data pins that, that have been connected here, logic input pins. I'm not using the cape right now because these are 3.3 volt signals. And I want to know that Beagle Logic is uh, the software and the hardware together. It's not just the cape that sits on top because the cape is just hit there for uh, 5 volt signals. It uh, it uh, translates those 5 volt signals into 3.3 volt signals which the BeagleBone can see. So now let me go and uh, paste the IP address of the BeagleBone. This, this is the IP address of the BeagleBone which you can see here. Then I'm going to paste this address. I've already typed it in. Uh, press go. Then you can see that the web interface appears. Then go ahead and select the sample rate which I need. Then I need a thousand samples to capture. Then uh, we have only three pins connected, so I'm gonna uncheck this checkbox here. Now, when I begin capture, you see that uh, it requests the amount of data, and there is your captured data. So this is the clock. This is the serial data. And this is a worse select line because I've captured an i square s bus here. So I can go on scrolling. This interface looks pretty cool on a tablet. So you can see that these are the lines. I can do it again. Uh, I will get a different set of data this time. Sure. So this is the this is the my data here and this is the web interface of BeagleLogic running on my tablet. It doesn't matter if this tablet is an Android tablet or an iPad because it's using a web interface. So irrespective of the platform you're using it in, it will always look the same and do the same thing. So now going back to the presentation, if you want to see more in-depth videos of Beagle Logic in action, I suggest you have a look at the semi-final and the quarter-final videos of Beagle Logic. I'm going to post a link here. I'll wait for you to be back. Then I'm going to dive into some uh, technical details about the uh, Beagle Logic. So this is the main system on chip, uh, which is a one gigahertz processor. You have the PRUs, the primal real-time units, which are two microcontrollers for real-time tasks. These PRUs are what make Beagle Logic Beagle possible because they can talk directly using the L3 interconnect to the system memory without intervention from the ARM core. So you can directly access the 500 megabytes of RAM without intervention from the ARM core and that's what makes Beagle Logic possible. For developers, there's some advanced information on, on Beagle Logic here and now I'm going to move on to 
future plans of Beagle Logic. The first one being that if I win the best product prize, I'm gonna go ahead to create a BeagleBone variant with at least one gigabyte of RAM and gigabit Ethernet so that I can get more samples and have high speed real time sampling. Using an ADC, we can get analog sampling capabilities. Using a optimized decoder application, so you can have the ARM core decode protocols in real time with the PRU sampling and the ARM core decoding as protocols. You can also do software defined radio wherein the uh, ARM core reads the high speed data travel from the PRUs and then it processes that data into maybe audio which is then streamed out over the network. We can also reverse that data flow to realize an arbitrary waveform generator using uh, from data flowing from the Beagle Black to the external device. And then also a possibility of using a Cirrus interface to extend channels beyond 14 by sacrificing the sample, by trading a sample rate for more number of samples. At last, I'd like to uh, thank BeagleBoard.org and Google Smart of Code, uh, which Beagle Logic was originally materialized in, the Hackaday Prize, and the Sigrock platform, which Beagle Logic makes great use of. All these links are annotated, so you can go ahead and view uh, these projects and what's in them. So that's all for the presentation, and I look forward to you using Beagle Logic. Thanks very much for watching.